Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your presence with us this morning. I ask for your help to present this, what you've laid in my heart to present, Father. I pray your Holy Spirit be with us in this room, your angels watching over us and guiding us. And um, I pray that I can speak eloquently and clearly what uh, the, the studies that I have uh, been led to, to, um, to understand. Ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I would like to move on to the topic for today, which is 777, is the name of the presentation. <clears throat> I'd just like to finish off something that I forgot to finish off yesterday. And we had looked at the the days that Christ had spent in the holy place and there was a calculation made of 18, 44 days, 21 hours and 15 minutes and it came to the 33rd second or you could say 33 seconds <clears throat> and I connected that to the year 1533 BC when the, there was the Passover and um, there was a section here, I forgot to mention that about that Passover and that the, the number 1533 can connect to the Millerite history and from 11th of August 1840 to the 22nd of October 1844 there was uh, 1533 days and um, this I tied into a quote that Ellen White made in the great Controversy, page 611. She says that the Advent movement of 1840 to 44 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. So she doesn't actually say what specific dates in 1840 and 1844 there, but we understand that uh, there was two significant time prophecies that met their fulfillment in them years. Uh, in 1840 it was the fulfillment of Revelation 9.15. She speaks about this, uh, this quote is from the Great Controversy, 1888, page 334, paragraph 4 and 5. She says, in the year 1840, another remarkable fulfillment of prophecy excited widespread interest. Two years before, Josiah Litch, one of the leading ministers preaching the Second Advent movement, preaching the Second Advent, published an exposition of Revelation 9 predicting the fall of the Ottoman Empire and specifying not only the year, but the very day on which this would take place. So you're probably familiar with most of this. I'll just go on to where it says the event exactly fulfilled the prediction. When it became known, multitudes were convinced of the correctness of the principles of prophetic interpretation adopted by Miller and his associates. And a wonderful impetus was given to the Advent movement. Men of learning and position united with Miller, both in preaching and publishing his views. And from 1840 to 1844, the work rapidly extended. So you, you can identify there an impetus to the, to the movement, uh, we could say that's uh, part of a glorious manifestation of the power of God. And we can relate that then 1533 days to the year 1833 BC, uh, when, which was the date of the, the Passover in the, ancient, in the history of ancient Israel. 1533, is that what I said? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, 1533. Um, if you, there's a quote there, if you have that paper, it's Patriarchs and Prophets, page 340.1. Um, Ellen White writes, Never since man was created had there been witnessed such a manifestation of divine power as when the law was proclaimed from Sinai. So you could read into that 
the, there's a, like a glorious manifestation of the power of God in that history as well. In 15, in, in, them, them, bo in them both, in them periods of 1533 days in the Millerite history and the year 1533, there was a midnight cry. Um, you can see that with the 10th plague, midnight cry in the summer of 1844. Um, you could tie in the crossing of the Red Sea with um, the 11th of August 1840 in the sense that that typified 9-11, which corresponds to baptism for the priests. And on the 22nd of October 1844, there was the Ark containing the law was uh, manifested, it says in Revelation 11:19, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the Ark of the Testament, and the Sabbath became a test. And then in Mount Sinai, in the year 1533 BC, that the law was proclaimed to God's people. Amidst the most terrific convulsions of nature, the voice of God, like a trumpet, was heard from the cloud. The mountain was shaken from base to summit. And so I'm connecting them this year, um, 1533, as a symbol that can tie in with the the 15 minutes and 33 seconds that was part of the calculation of uh, Christ's literal time in the holy place. And uh, we could tie it in with the cross and we could, well, uh, we could understand that the cross was a, a glorious manifestation of the power of God. I wouldn't really have to uh, go into that. There's probably quotes I haven't gone into it, but I probably could find quotes that would support that. So we'll move on to the, the subject of the presentation. It's called 777. So it was 1,533 days from August 11th to October 22nd? Yes. Wow. From when to when again? August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844 was 1,533 okay. days. Okay. And that history lines up with the history of the first Passover in 1533. <clears throat> uh, so the, the subject this morning is 777. Uh, a year or two ago I'd come to understand that there was um, from the, the Berlin Wall collapsing to when the Soviet Union ended in 1991, uh, it was the 777th day that that had, uh, there was, you mark a 777 there, but you'd have to include the last day, so you'd have to, depends, depending how you count, you can't just say there was 777 days between them, but you could say that, that the, the 25th of December 1991 was the 777th day. And then, um, Following the presentations in 2018 here, with Sister Tess, and then with Theodore, um, there was like a... We, we seen their messages being connected at the time, and then um, after a few months, J Jeff had presented that, the studies of Theodore, for a few months, and, and his travels, and, and here, and then uh, around the early 2019, the, the, the 18th of July 2020 study fell out of favour. And the 2021 for the date of Raffia was more preferred. And then it even got to the stage where no time setting should be, uh, was being said that we shouldn't be time setting at all for beyond Raffia, that we, our focus should now just be on Raffia. And uh, at that other time, uh, I didn't know, I didn't really have uh, a justification for the arguments that, uh, that would justify the 18th of July 2020, or even the date in 2021. And then, um, Elder Jeff, then, in his last presentation here, uh, well, or in, in the, yeah, it was over in the, in the other room, 
uh, that he gave a presentation in March 2019. It was his last presentation before he was going to retire. And uh, we can just read this here. I have uh, an introduction to that. It says, uh, he gave an argument for time setting pre raffia for Panium. Um, it says, in the spring of 2018, there were concerns about time setting in the movement beyond November the 9th, 2019, with an emph emphasis that our personal preparation for that date should be our sole focus. And in addition, it was being taught that we only receive time for panium beyond raffia. The passage that was cited for this argument was the Great Controversy, page 640. The voice of God is heard from heaven declaring the day and hour of Jesus' coming. Nevertheless, J Elder Jeff, in his last presentation before his retirement, put forward an argument favouring an understanding of a time element for Panium before the 9th of November 2019. He made mention that the light of Raphia and Panium came at the same time in December 2016, trust that God had held his hand over, as with the 2520 and 2300 day prophecies which, with which he paralleled. The 2300 and 2520 are symbols of the sanctuary and the host, and we cannot have one without the other. Uh, he quoted Matthew 19, verse 6, which is related to marriage. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And that decision of Adventists after 1844 to primarily focus on the 2300 days rather than the time prophecies uh, rather than both time prophecies meant that they could not see the prophetic significance of 1863, a date which Elder Jeff lined up with Panium. Therefore, it was argued that we are similarly at risk of neglecting Panium by focusing solely on Raphia, which they are meant to be considered together. Furthermore, he made an argument using the passage that Elder Perminder had cited from Early Writings, page 74, that had opened the door to the possibility of time setting in the movement. He'd, he'd done that in Italy in 2018. Ellen White in 1851 stated that they were now in the gathering time and she saw that it was wrong for any to refer to the scattering time, scattering for examples to govern us now in the gathering. For if God should do no more for us now than he did then, Israel would never be gathered. It is recognised by this movement that we are now in the gathering time and the arguments that were used in the scattering time about time setting and not to govern us now. Concerning this, the argument Elder Jeff made was that the passage which is used to contend that we cannot time set for Panium until after Raphia was in its context relating to the seven last plagues time period, which he said was a scattering time and therefore does not apply to the period that we are now to be governed. Elder Jeff acknowledged the concerns of those who expressed that Raphia should be our sole focus and in measure agreed with them, but his instincts not let the option of a time for Panium being, being considered before Raphia be without merit. So I was, um, as I was considering the year 2021, I was thinking if there was going to be a time for, um, for Panium in 2021, uh, it just came to my mind uh, that the 25th of December would be a significant date in that year because we've, we're, we're relating the 9th of November back to the Berlin Wall. And so it's the same amount of time, it's 30 years then later to the 25th of December, 2021. <clears throat> and, uh, From the, the, the end of the Soviet Union. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just had the idea, where are we going to get the date for Panium from? You know, where would we get it from? So that just came in my mind, and then I just sort of looked into it. I just sort of... Uh, She's just uh, done some studies, calculations, and whatever, and, and um, I found that the the time period just came to exactly 777 days. Um, there's a, a leap year in the year 2020, which wasn't there in, in 1990, so it's, it's one day more. So it even just fits even more. I found that the, the 25th of December 2021 was the Sabbath, and as is 9th of November, <coughs> There was just lots of things just seemed to be connecting. So, um, so I've just uh, I've made this here document. I just send it out to propose it 
as a, just for a discussion. I wasn't, these are the things I found. I was just trying to look, looking for feedback. Um, so I asked the sort of position that I, I took then, and I sort of, I'm still, when you come to time setting, I think um, you should have some caution in doing that. You know, you should have some good evidence for time setting. So uh, just in the next section there, it says um, about Panium being in 2021. So after, initially after pre the presentations of Sister Tess in Arkansas last year, that pointed to the 9th of November 2019 as the close of probation for the priests. Studies seamlessly followed that presented the 18th of July 2020 as the potential date for Panium. However, this was overshadowed by the presentations teaching 2021 as the date for Panium. The main argument for Panium being in 2021 was... Page two. Yeah. Just a, it's a section called Panium equals 2021, question mark. So the main argument for Panium uh, being in 2021 is the chiasm from 1856 to 2021, which includes two 126s and parallels the chiasm of the two 2520s. So if this is valid, and if one was to anticipate a date in 2021, now for Panium, a date that has historical related significance is the 25th of December 2021. This date links to the events of the 25th of December 1991 in a similar manner as how the 9th of November 2019 was emphasised in this movement being connected to events 30 years previously, namely the fall of the Berlin Wall. On the 25th of December 1991, President Gorbachev resigned and the Soviet flag was lowered at the Kremlin signalling the end of the USSR. So I would like to consider the period of the 9th of November 1989 to the 25th of December 1991. Um, there are 777 days, maybe I should have, instead of 1989 to 1991, maybe I should say 2019 to 2021, I think that's a mistake. So there are 777 days between these dates. This is the 25th of December 2021 falls on the 20th day of the ninth month in the biblical cal calendar. This date is found in Ezra 10.9, where there was a proclamation to gather unto Jerusalem, a recognition to separate from the people of the land and strange wives, and it was a time of great rain. These are terms that could well symbolise events at Panium. So there's like a gathering unto Jerusalem. We recognise Jerusalem as a, is um, a term that can be applied to the midnight cry, which we line up with Panium. Um, so in July, 18th of July 2020 is Panium. So I was, I then had the idea that that there would be two way marks for the midnight cry. At the, if you look at the history of the midnight cry in 1888 with Samuel Snow, he preached. 1844. Sorry, 1844. Uh, he preached one sermon in Boston, uh, and that was uh, on the 21st of July. And then in the midnight cry in the Exeter camp meeting, he preached on the 14th and the 15th, so you see two dates there. We understand there's one event at Raphia where we see the, the King of the South uh, having a victory against the King of the North, while at the Midnight Cry we see the a strike by Islam, and then there's a, a, vic a victory for the King of the North over the King of the South. So uh, you can maybe allow an element where it's uh, over a period of time, or including at least two dates. So I'll just read on for the, the next paragraph. We recognise two events at Panium. The King of the North defeats the King of the South, and based upon a study of Balaam and the Ass, an attack will take place upon the USA by radical Islam. However, there is a desire for clarity as to which event takes place first, or if they happen at the same time. 
The study concerning the 18th of July 2020 contends that this was a date that pointed to an attack by radical Islam upon the USA. Therefore, this study puts forward, puts forward the idea that this event takes place first, followed by the King of the North defeating the King of the South. It has, it has, been, previous, it has been noted in previous studies that there are 272 days, sorry, 252 days between the 9th of November 2019 and the 18th of July 2020. There are also 525 days from the 18th of July 2020 to uh, the 25th of December 2021. So this is like 25, 252 being inverted. One period emphasizes the number two while the other emphasizes the number five. Yet both numbers are intermingled and together relate to the number, to the number seven. We can see similarities with these numbers in the history of the persecution of the Christian church from 34 AD to 1798, being 17, 1764 years, which equates to seven times 252. This time period can be divided into 504 years, which is two times 252 of pagan persecution, and 1260 years, which is five times 252 of papal persecution. The time period of the seven years of famine in Egypt during the time of Joseph can also be divided into periods of two and five years. And it can, it can be shown that the last seven plagues have a similar pat pattern with a death decree coming after the second plague. Um, so I have um, this... Have it on the chart on the board here. <clears throat> so um, this is Raffia, twenty first of July, lined up with the 9th of November. And we have, I lined up the 14th of August with Panium, being with Islam, and the 15th of August with Panium, relating to the King of the North and the King of the South. And that lines up the 25th of December, each day here. So this is a, um, a 777 day period. It can be divided up into 252 and 525. This 525 relates is to 12,006, 600 hours, so we better like a, a 1260 there. Um, each day here is the Sabbath, so you have there another 777 symbolized from the 9th of November to the 25th of December in any one calendar year. It's 46 days, and 46 days uh, we can see is symbolizing the, the temple, and it was uh, related to the number three. Christ said, raise up this temple and I destroy it, yeah, and I will rebuild it, raise it up in three days. And so you can even put the, the three days there, one, two, three. This is from 34 AD to 1798. It can be divided into a period that emphasizes the number two and a period that number emphasizes the number five. Five times 252 and then two times 252. This is the, the seven years famine of uh, Genesis, where Joseph was in Egypt. There was two years of famine, and then after two years, he meets Joseph. Um, Joseph meets his, his father and his brothers, and then there was a, a further period of five years of famine. And then with the seven last plagues, there's two, two plagues followed by a death decree, and then there's five um, plagues that follow that. So you just see in that, just connecting them to the, this structure, uh, from the 21st of July to the 15th of August, uh, it's 25 days as well. Um, so you see in the 25, they're quite prominent in this here. And 25 relates to, to the Levites in Numbers 8, 
verse 24. It says that the Levites were 25 years old before they began their, their work as, um, in the sanctuary. And um, it, this here time period normally would re relate to the harvest of the Levites after Panium. And, uh, but this would be their uh, latter rain time period, which would prepare them for harvest. So, um, the Levites, the Latterium, will prepare them for their harvest. So, just an idea, just, um, this is all, I'm not being dogmatic for, with anything here, but I'm just proposing it. If you have anything, any questions, any thoughts? And you're saying that when Joseph told the sons that they don't bring back Benjamin, that that's the death decree, that dialogue that lines up with the death decree. And you got the death decree closer yes. to this, okay. Yeah, I'm just noticing it lines up with that as to any <coughs> application. I'm, I'm, I haven't really, if it springs up any ideas in your mind. What, you're saying from July 18th to the 25th of December, that's when the Levites are being harvested. Or you're saying it prepares them for harvest? Well, initially the idea was that they prepare them for harvest, but as I say, I'm not dogmatic, I'm open to being corrected on that. You know, it's, uh, I'm just kind of putting, you're proposing. Out the put, hmm? You're laying out the numbers. Yes, and then just um, if things need to be taken away or. I think one of the, the things that we're grappling with is that, Har uh, that Parminder has introduced four closed doors when there's only really three. Mm -hmm. And that impacts how we define harvest. Okay. Because yeah, I think the, the response to the ensign by the Levites is when they're being harvested. And it concludes probably on December 25th, 2021, and then the harvest of the 11th hour workers begins, which concludes mm -hmm. when Michael stands up. But that's outside the scope of what you're presenting. But it is an illustration of where we're having to go back through and rethink, rethink his harvest model and four closed doors instead of three. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty, pretty profound up there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What is the uh, 46 days on the second line, 46 days have to do uh, with, the, with that period? It's uh, in any calendar year, the 9th of November to the 25th of December is 46 days. Or any calendar year? Yeah, in, in any one yeah, single okay, year. Yeah, okay, No, I'm not adding, I'm not going to the following year. Yes, I understand year. now, yeah. Okay. Okay, I get you. Yeah. And that's the finishing of the temple that is yeah. made up mm -hmm. of the priests and the Levites. It's mm -hmm. yeah. finished at that point. So after uh, I've done this, or during the time of my study with this, I um, I just the difference. I find out the difference between two five two and five two five is two seven three, which uh, connected to the studies that. Tess was doing here, and she had that number as being prominent. And uh, when it was, when the studies here last year were taking place, there was a connection to Sister Tess's message being labeled as the message that comes from out of the north, and Theodore's message as being coming out of the east. And um, if you go down to the represented numbers coupled with the tidings out of the east and the north. So I'm, I had the idea of, because this ends after 252 days, and this here comes after 525 days, that just putting them there as symbols for these, and then for 273 for the 9th of November, connecting that with Sister Tessa's message, which uh, had a focus on this date, and that was a prominent number. 
So if you add 273 plus 252 equals 525. And so I tie that in with the tidings out of the north and the east equals Daniel 11, 44 to 45. And he shall come and uh, with great fury and to set up the tabernacles. Yes? Can you explain the Ezra 10, 9, 20 day of the ninth month? Or did you already cover that? Um, yes, that's another date that I did. I, I did mention it. Um, in the, it's in the, I read it, but I didn't speak on it here. Yeah, this date is Ezra, 25th of December 2021 is the 20th day of the ninth month in the biblical calendar in 2021. And that's the date found in Ezra chapter 10, verse 9. And that was the time there was a, there was a gathering to Jerusalem, a time of great rain, a separation of wives, of um, who were not of um, Israel stock type, you know, they weren't Israelites. Um, is that it? Is there anything else? I don't have any. I just all of those, all of those characteristics. You could also line up with <coughs> Pentecost. Uh, the people mm -hmm. are gathered together. Um, they've separated from the Hebrew Church that has rejected the message, and it's a time of great rain. Um, and we line Pentecost up with the Sunday law. Mm -hmm. Not that you're not that you're saying that's a Sunday law. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's making that inference. Well, it could well be. Um, so the following structure combines the initial understanding with the represented numbers. I'm just reading the last bit here, uh, the last sentence. Of the uh, says, the represented numbers. So the following structure combines the, re the initial understanding with the represented numbers and suggests the message of the 9th of November is to be combined with the message of the 18th of July to point to the 25th of December, 2021. <coughs> Uh, the only thing that the tidings of the east and the north being one message, mm -hmm. but they're two messages mm -hmm. that are one. I don't know if it makes any difference, but it says the tidings out of the east first, and then there's tidings out of the east and out of the north. While I have it there, tidings out of the north and then out of the east. So I don't know if it, you could. <laughs> I that would give you some indication if Islam strikes at the first way mark mm -hmm. or second way mark perhaps but mm -hmm. that's <clears throat> um, yeah I also find that there's the only biblical reference um, that I find was for the 25th day of the 12th month you can find that in Jeremiah 52 I think it's verse 31 where Jehoiachin was taken from prison that year that was his, the 37th year, and he was then able to eat meat at the, the king's table or something. There was like a, he was given a provision of food, and he was sort of um, treated a lot better. As to how that would tie in with the 25th of December 21, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's just a, a suggestion. <clears throat> so uh, I'll move on to... If it's a Sunday law, the Seventh Day Adventist Church has come into complete unity with the Roman Church, and the Roman Church is now relating to them differently because mm -hmm. they're in unity. Mm -hmm. They're going to feed them. Yes, that's a problem. They've accepted their basic premise of Sunday sacredness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I put this study out there just for for people to uh, to consider in the April 2019 uh, I had uh, through indirectly I heard that it was considered as, as dangerous because it lined it up the way marks differently um, if we go to the section called a criticism of just applying Panium 30 years after 
the 25th of December 1991. So a criticism of proposing the 25th of December 2021 date for Panium by just adding 30 years from the end of the Soviet Union on the 25th of December 1991 is that the events do not line up with each way mark. It has been taught, though the concept has been disputed, that the 9th of November 1989 is the date of the deadly wound of the King of the South and the 25th of December 1991 marks his death. 30 years later, from, the, from 1989, on the 9th of November 2019, a victory of the King of the South is envisaged rather than his deadly wound, while his deadly wound is predicted to occur at Panium and his death at the Sunday Law. So I have that lined up there um, and here. So it's 1989, 2019, here you have a deadly wound and then you have a victory for the King of the South. And here you would have the death of the King of the South, but here you'd have a deadly wound. So this was uh, considered dangerous. Um, so I, I tried to uh, consider, is there any justification? That, uh, that, uh, uh, Can I say something about that? Yes. Um, I don't know if it's correct to call it foundational, but before 2001, in the, the 1990s, I repeatedly taught, repeatedly taught, it was one of my points of references, and I have reasons to make this point, that the whole story of Daniel 11, 40 to 45 is about the beast and the dragon and the false prophet. And then I would go in and argue that each of those three powers have their own peculiar characteristics. And I would use the example that in the Bible, in history, and even by the Roman Church's own confession, they never change. The Bible says they never change. They say they never change. History mm -hmm. attests to the fact they never change. Mm -hmm. That's a characteristic of the beast of Revelation 16. And I would use that argument, and then I'd say, whereas the false prophet, the United States, its characteristic is it is the power that does change. It begins as a lamb, and it ends up speaking as a dragon. Now, I was trying to let people see clearly and definitely that each of those three powers have their own specific prophetic characteristics. The dragon is always a confederacy of ten. You're not going to see a confederacy of ten with the false prophet or with the beast. So my point is, it's a wrong application of prophecy to assign a deadly wound to the dragon power. That is not the dragon power's characteristic. That is a characteristic of a beast. And those people that are saying you were dangerous by putting the lines up there are using their wrong application in claiming that the dragon power received a deadly wound in 1989 so that they can draw some conclusion here at the end of the world. So, so I'm saying their, their basic premise, the beginning point of their argument, is flawed by a misapplication. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying your structure is sound, but it's been clouded by the wrong applications. But your, your structure, if you remove those applications, it's airtight. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yeah, I did think about it, um, about her, well, it was Sister Tess that said it was dangerous. Um, I did consider her argument and thought it was, it was a good argument at the time, you know. But... <clears throat> But there is, I find that there was issues with her structure that she came up with, that, um, that she initially said that the birth, she lined up the birth of Christ being with 1989, and then you have 12 years, he became a carpenter, that was lined up with 9-11, 2001, and the carpenter we can relate to the building of the temple, and then for 18 years, and um, when he is 30, uh, Christ is baptized, which lines up with November 9th, 2019. And then Christ then entered his binding off period, 40 days in the wilderness, and then he began his work. But it wasn't really discussed, it wasn't really 
picked up what I heard anyway, that uh, we, there, there was an understanding for us that the priests would have their binding off in this period. I don't know whether it's still taught this way, but it was, was, this was my understanding of it. Uh, so the, the binding off would be from, if, the, if 2021 was Panium, so between Raphia and Panium, we would have our binding off, and then in 2021, we would then go on to do a work of harvesting the Levites, and that would be two years. So Christ, we would be then be 32 years old, and while Christ, he began to sort of harvest the disciples and so forth uh, when he was 30. So it is um, an incomplete structure. It may have some validity, but it, there's, it's not perfect. And then I had the idea that we can maybe consider 1989 to 91. It has been taught that their uh, block period of time is the time of the end. We can connect the, to the, the timeline of Moses, that you have Aaron and Moses' birth as being the time of the end in that history. In the history of Christ, you have John the Baptist's birth and Christ's birth being the time of the end in that history. So as a, a period of time, 1989 to 91, you can then go from 1991 representing as that that's from the time of the end so you can just go from the time of the end and add 30 and that will take you to, to de December the 25th 2021 where we then begin a work of um, harvesting the Nethanims or Levites or um, Nethanims okay <laughs> whatever you can do your yeah argument. yeah <clears throat> we could fight about it when it's not getting recorded <laughs> So I have that laid out. There's some other diagrams there where I relate to saying that this here structure here relates just to the binding off. And then we can have this here structure here which relates to the work beginning, beginning or ministry or, or work of harvesting. Could that not be... A time of the end in 1989 that's speaking of an internal, and a time of the end in 1991 that's speaking of an external. And the external in 91 is the collapse of the Soviet Union at the beginning, typifying the collapse of Russia at the end. Uh, the internal in 1989 is speaking about the 30 years of developing people that are ready, to, that are old enough to be priests in 2019. I mean, mm -hmm. There's, it seems like we already have the logic in this movement to rightly divide mm -hmm. that, um, those two 30-year periods. And the Lord put in place that the time then has two way marks, so we're justified in, in looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another issue I have with the structure is that you normally have, uh, or baptism, we recognize it being in 9-11, and... Uh, that would be lighting up when Christ is 12, while Christ has his baptism when he's 30. So, there is, uh, there's nuances. Baptism, being 9-11 is correct, but it's been misused in this movement uh, in connection with the midnight cry. Mm -hmm. um, because we came to understand first and foremost that the midnight cry was the crossing of the Jordan and then when we began to discover other witnesses to the midnight cry we would see water double waters waters over and over again so definitely Christ was baptized at the Jordan but in the transition from Elijah and Elisha uh, there's a double striking of the water um, so what I'm saying is 9-11 has its purpose to teach things based upon Christ's baptism but we've begun to use that as the transition of the messengers. And the transitions of the messengers is actually going to take place on the other lines of prophecy at the Jordan, which we first understood to be the crossing of the Jordan into the promised land, when Moses was 120 years old and when they were 40 years in the wilderness. That 120 took us from the first day of the first month, 9-11, to the midnight cry. So... 
we've we've allowed ourselves to place an emphasis upon 9/11, and it's corrupted a lot of our ideas. You, you're not complaining, but you're pointing out the dichotomy up there of yeah. him being 30 years old, when by the way marks of our history, he should have been baptized then when he was 12 years old. Um, and unfortunately, that very problem is the argument about how there had to be a second messenger at 9-11. And, and where we went wrong there is we have at least five passages that teaches that what happens at 9-11 is all the messages are blended. But we've been led to believe that at 9-11 you've got to see a distinction between the first messenger and the second messenger, and it's premised on not rightly identifying what the baptism at 9-11 of Christ really represents. And it even, it even is impacting that line up there that you're looking at and have some question marks. Mm -hmm. um, sorry that I'm sidetracking your, your thoughts. No, no, it's all right. No, it's good, I welcome considerations. Um, I just noticed a few things with the number 273, this is not really prophetic things, but just like mathematically, it's quite, I thought it quite interesting. Um, we, um, we've noticed like two, 252 and then 525, and uh, if you bring them together, the number 273 divides into it perfectly, but also found out it divides into every six digit number um, if, in, when it's grouped in uh, threes, like 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, 20, 20, 21, 21, 20, 21, and just right up to 9, 9, 9, 9. Um, it just... Uh, it divides without any remainder? Yeah. How rare is that? <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to find that at Google and see if anyone, any other mathematicians have noticed this, or I, 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 I don't know. I, I, it wasn't anything that came up anyway in the first page or two, and uh, I just thought that was uh, very significant. So it, it speaks as if, as if this year, 52, or 252 and 525 can sort of justify to, to bring them in a way, bring them together in a way, and connect it with the 273. Um, I found out that 50, 50, 50 uh, divides into. Uh, 273 divides into 1850 times, so you can relate that to Pentecost, and then it's like a justification to relating, lining up Pentecost with the year 1850 as well, and the message going abro abroad to uh, uh, the churches formed, and then, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll move on to just touch on this here. Uh, this is. Are you going to remind us of the various other places in history where you found December twenty fifth? You you mentioned them oh, the yes. other day. Um, yes, yeah, the twenty fifth of December was the year. It marks it in the year two seven four A.D., and it was the dedication of the the temple of to the unconquerable. Sun, um, Sol Invictus, you call it, by the em uh, Roman Emperor Aurelian. So you can relate something to uh, the worship, sun worship, to the 25th of December. Um, it was the year that Clovis was baptized. They locate that being the year 476, 496 AD, and it was the same. That's when France became the firstborn daughter of the Catholic Church. And France is typifying the United States. And at the Sunday Law, the United States would become the firstborn daughter of the Catholic Church at the end, as mm -hmm. typified by France. And Clovis was baptized on the 25th of December, 496. Mm -hmm. And baptism is the death and resurrection symbolized. And so you have like a, a death of the United States and then a resurrection as part of the Ten Kings. As well there, and then in the year eighteen hundred, year eight hundred, uh, Charlemagne was crowned by the Pope on the twenty fifth of December, and he was then uh, he was crowned head of the Holy Roman Empire, 
Um, so you maybe, and so he's... The Threefold Union and Trump becomes mm -hmm. crowned as the head of the Holy Roman Empire again. <laughs> yes, and Charlemagne is like Charles the Great, and uh, he's Trump the Great, you know. <laughs> you, maybe, you, you see Great being applied to, to Trump. Yes, Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. Is it the 25th of December, the, supposedly the birthday of Tammuz? Yeah, I think and, uh, and that's And that's really, you know, where the, the, the idea of December 25th being the birthday of Christ comes from? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Jeff? I'd have to go, I, that's, I would say yes, but I'd have to go back and look at um, Hislop's Two Babylons one more time. Yeah. You? confirm that. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure it is. I've heard that for years. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I've heard something like that as well. So, um, there's not, there's really one mention of the the number 777 in the Bible, and that relates to the the age that Lamech lived. Uh, he lived 777 years. And so I, I lined up this 777 day period with Lamech 777 years. <clears throat> so Lamech would be born on the, the, November the 9th and would die on the 25th of December 2021. And in doing that, I found that if you go back, his father was Methuselah and he would have been born then 187 days previous, which would be the 6th of May. Um, 187 we can relate to the 18th of July as well as a symbol um, and it's also from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the 10th day of the seventh month and um, which was the 22nd of October in 1844 which we understand is a shut door and so it's evidence then that the 9th of November is a shut door message which is quite scary and if you to consider. Um, the 6th of May, um, Enoch was his father, and Enoch was 65 years old when he gave birth to Methuselah, and this is the 6th day of the 5th month, so it lines up with Enoch's age. And if you combine the age of Enoch and Methuselah uh, to when um, Enoch would have been, would have been 252, day, 252 years old then um, when Lamech was born. So you have a 252 here, and then you have a 252 that ends on the 18th of July 2020. And then um, Odilio mentioned that um, in his study that there was another 252 days to the 27th day of the third month which is 273 days then to the 25th of December 2021. There's no, we're not marking any specific event, but it's just that uh, it's like uh, he, he talked about some, yeah, like, uh, some computer data thing you put in the... Yeah. Repeat that. A cyclically redundancy check. Cyclic redundancy check. <laughs> so it's some things that people in the computer industry no, what's that about? <laughs> Do you know anything that happened on 6 May or March 2nd? This, this year, uh, it was the birth of Archie, the um, Megan and the Duchess of, you know, it's um, the royal family in the UK. So it was a birth of their son, Megan and Harry. Uh, that's, that's the only thing I noticed. I was, I was expecting him to name Archie Methuselah, but it didn't happen. We don't, we don't follow the royals over here like you guys do over in those islands. Yeah. We broke away from yeah. that a couple hundred years ago. Yeah. But I'm just noticing the, the dates. I'm not, it would be nice to, to have some event, but you have the date, uh, the 27th of July, 1449, and it's just like a, there's not, no event there that we mark. But we, we do consider it like a, as a prophetic uh, date, a symbol. And maybe in, in that sort of same way, lighting up with the sixth day of the fifth month, this is just more like a... Yeah, we've got a second witness internally, mm -hmm. just with 
six maybe in sixty <clears throat> five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just recently done another study, which lined up the sixty five years of Isaiah, chapter seven, verse eight, which was the beginning of the twenty five twenty. Well, it wasn't that. It sort of. There was the twenty five twenty was going to be nineteen years after that began, but. Uh, it sort of linked down to like a, a preliminary, preliminary time before that. So 742 to 7, 677 BC, we recognize there's 65 years, and that began at 2520 there. So I was kind of right there. So I was sort of, uh, yeah, I was just thinking the Northern Kingdom previously. So if we line up the, line up the age of Enoch when he gave birth to Methuselah, uh, and, and plug it into that history in, in 65 years Methuselah would then be living for 187 years after that and that would take us to the year 490 BC and we line up that line up, line up that date with November the 9th uh, 2019 and we can relate to the number 490 to being the close of probation uh, which kind of Connects with that. It fits. Have you looked at what would take place on March 21st, 19 days after March 2nd, based upon Isaiah 7 8? Never mind. You know what I mean? In, that, right, in Isaiah 7, it goes 19 years in. Nope. Here? Yeah, there'd be 19. And then if you go straight up with your stick, it would take mm -hmm. you to March 21st. Okay. You haven't looked at that. I haven't even thought. It hasn't been on the radar. Okay. No. All right. So, uh, <laughs> well, March twenty-first is uh, like the equinox time period. Yeah, it's uh, the beginning of spring. So, <laughs> maybe something to consider. Um, just the last um, uh, topic uh, to consider. Uh, this is the, the death the death of the Pope and the deadly wound and death of the Pope that time period from 1798 to 1799 <coughs> and um, Berthier the, the general of Napoleon he entered Rome on the 10th of February five days later he declared uh, a Roman Republic on the 15th of February and then on the 20th of February 1798 the Pope was then removed from Rome and um, he was then taken over a period of time to France to the Citadel in Valence and he died on the 29th of August 1799 and there's 555 days uh, between the period from when he left Rome to when he died, which uh, kind of relates to the 777 days of, of our period. Um, this date, 1799, is also 222 years from 2021. So if you add that 222 years and the 555 days you could have a, like a 777 there as well um, just something that I thought was interesting when you could make that uh, correlation so uh, any other questions before we close okay. I followed what you said I don't know that I could repeat it mm -hmm. but the prophetic implications of is that if that's where the deadly wound was delivered, the Sunday law up there on December 25th or thereabouts is where the deadly wound is healed. So we should see that structure somehow represented because he, Christ illustrates the end with the beginning. Mm -hmm. It has to be there somehow. Mm -hmm. Again, I remember what, what you just said there. I'm going to have a point. I'm just saying, when he's dealing with the history of the 
delivering of the deadly wound, yes. we need to see that history up there at the Sunday Law when the deadly wound is healed. Yeah. And, it, and how long a period is there between the two? Between 1798 and 2021. <clears throat> yeah. Well, from 1799, from when he died, is 222 years. So you can add up to the five. Yeah, there is. Yeah, you can add up to the five, five, five days. The different, the amount of those years, if you add to is five, 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 comes to seven, seven, seven. And he's already illustrated that up above. Yeah, and the healing of the dead, the seven, seven, seven being with the, if it's the healing of the dead, at the end of the dead, the healing of the dead, the deadly wound. Again, the seven is completeness, so healing. Shall we close with prayer? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, you've opened up things here, that uh, a structure that looks as if it's your movements, that has your fingerprints over it, and um, we would want to be uh, considering these here things. It's a uh, time setting we know is a very controversial topic, um, but it's, it's hard to deny just these structures that uh, we're beginning to understand. And um, Father, I just pray that uh, if these things are so, Father, that you give us a conviction that they are true and that we are to proclaim them, proclaim them that you through your providence, open ways that this here message can be proclaimed to, to others out there in the, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and others in the movement, that they be convicted that this is uh, your work that has taken place here. And Father, that, uh, help us to understand what these waymarks mean, what's going to be happening on the 25th of December, 2021, if an event is going to be taking place there. Um, give us insights as to how to understand what the 20th day of the ninth month means as well for that date and, and just the, the other symbols that we see connected with the, this here structure. And um, we ask your blessing upon us this day and may we know your love and your presence. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>